<laughs> there's that. Uh, we also, I think we have a fair few viewers coming out from Jim Rising's community. I just checked my Twitter and I had like 10 notifications all in Spanish. <laughs> so, Sounds about right. So I'm like, right. I guess uh, Jim tweeted this out. I know, uh, I know he's excited to play in this tournament and I'm excited to watch him. I think he's a little bit tired though. As I was uh, telling Falcon, he was casting Home Story Cup, to my knowledge. So he's an absolute trooper coming out to play after that. Absolutely. The passion that this guy has. He said, you want want me to forfeit versus Puck? Or uh, you think think I'm not going to play Puck once more? No. So anyway, here we are. Absolutely. In the bottom right-hand side of the map, it's Jim Rising. And in the top left-hand side, it's the yellow Protoss, Puck, from Root, where he's been for so many years now. Are you a Puck fan, Falcon? I am. I like Puck quite a bit. Good dude. Good dude, good soul, good player. Been around for so long. Good performances. Yay, we are... His Warp Prism stuff is awesome to behold. We are live on the calendar. Yay, we did it. It took us an hour. Yes. <laughs> so now, uh, now, uh, it might be known that we're alive to a few more people. But yeah, speaking of that, make sure to let your friends know that, uh, this tournament is live. As, uh, Freak of World, uh, not at our usual time. That's because we're covering a different region. Good StarCraft, though, so far from that first series. Yeah, both of us have tweeted it out, so Laughing Games and Falcon Paladin just go to our pages and retweet. Easy to do. Easy peasy. And if you're not following us on Twitter while you're there, go do that too. I also see Padawan in chat saying, and go Jim Rising. All right, who takes this one? Who do you think? Puck or Jim Rising? Ugh, feeling Puck right now i think so too jim rising's pretty tired Uh uh-huh and uh tiredness is a big factor into competing in anything and you know what else laughing games what infested terrans are gone oh but jim rising only builds hydralisk never mind jim rising (laughs) is fine (laughs) all all jokes all jokes aside uh yeah, uh, we'll see. Jim did me- message me after he's like, I was like, yo, is it fine if we play this on the new patch? He's like, sure, even though Zerg is garbage in it. <laughs> I like how everybody's already decided how this patch is going for their favorite race. Oh, they decide. The second that a Blizzard employee thinks of the idea for the patch, pro gamers start twitching. Not as just pro gamers. Just everyone. Everyone has a thought on it already. The only thought I have is that uh, BCs, their teleport cooldown is reset if they're neuraled or if they're abducted, which is a bug. Yeah. And that is an issue for someone like me. So I'm probably just going to hold out on play until that's fixed. Okay. Because I only make battle cruisers in TVZ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Small bug to some, today. big bug to me. <laughs> yes. Padawan, I did not say Jim Rising's clan that you included in that message, because I know I would butcher the pronunciation. Absolutely. You want to take a run at that? Uh, Padawan SC? No, uh, Jim Rising's clan. Oh, um, Makako. Makako? Yeah, that, that sound, that, that's how I'd say it. All right. So, so f- yeah, hmm. we've got Microbial Shroud, and Infested Terrans are gone. Microbial Shroud, for those of you who've played Brood War or watched Brood War in the past, is just a worse Dark Swarm. Mm-hmm. Much worse, so right? Yeah, substantially worse in pretty much every way. Because, Kim, <laughs> with Dark Swarm and Brood War, you, Brood War, you're the Brood War guy. 
Uh huh. Can, they can't be targeted at all unless they're like scanned or whatever, right? Hmm. They can be targeted, but all ranged damage is negated. Seriously, like a hundred percent. Splash damage still affects, but direct damage is negated 100%. Marines wow. sitting outside of a dark swarm that Zerglings are in can shoot all day, and the Zerglings will not take any damage. Ah, wow. And they'll actually just try and shoot. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, for sure. They'll still fire. Meanwhile, this queen's going to die. Yeah, may she rest in peace. But that's going to be about it for those oracles. Well, Makako means monkey in Portuguese. Uh-huh. We're getting a I'm Spanish lesson too. while casting StarCraft 2. Or... Well, so Microbial Shroud is... And Spanish. Air damage is brought to 50%. Yeah. Hmm. Inside the circle. And the circle is smaller than with Dark Swarm. I don't so, even eh. see where that would be effective. I mean, it makes Hydras a little better versus Carriers. But you're just getting stormed anyway. That's the main reason you don't build Hydras <laughs> versus Carriers. If it, negated, if it reduced storm damage, yeah. I'd be like, yeah. But as it doesn't, it's like, oh, cool. My Hydras can die to storm now. And it doesn't That's even last that wanted. long or isn't even that big of an area of effect to it. Right. Right. I think it's bad, but again, it's early. It's early to make that kind of a decision. Okay, now, hmm. Imagine this, just 200, 200 roaches versus carriers, and you just cover all your units. So your roaches take no damage from the carriers. Well, 50% damage. Well, basically none, because they'll be armored and they'll be taking 50%. So they'll live forever, then you just kill all the Protoss buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not bad. There's a reason you never see carriers Zerg and Brute, and that's part of it. Really? Huh. Yeah, ever. Like, a, a big part of it is Hydras alone, even without Dark Swarm, just wreck carriers cost for cost. Oh, okay. So that's part of it. Anyway, Oracle's doing some Hawk stuff has here. What a is lot this? of Oracles. And oh, he's going for the new Void Ray upgrade. His, what is this, Florencio? Who are we watching? It's the faster Voids. Yeah, the flux veins up. Oh, these boys are speedy. They certainly are. And as I said in the last series, speed is really good in RTS. It is. It's it's the speed upgrade, isn't it? It's the speed update, isn't it? Medivacs have uh, quicker speed with that upgrade. Same for voids. And same for zealots. Yeah. Huh. Now, how do you feel about Puck making mass void rays? I feel like he's experimenting right now, because I still feel like Hydras destroy them. Yeah. But what if they outrun the Hydras? <laughs> or, or what if Jim Rising makes Infestors and uses the dark... What? The microbial, microbial Shroud. Microbial Shroud. That is a mouthful. It is. I can't, I can't wait to be casting a serious game. That's just like down to the wire and it's like in my crap, rap, rap, rap. I think we'll just call it Shroud. That's easier. Yeah, that's a good idea. So Matessa Chat said somebody suggested Microbial Shroud should be placed on a unit so it follows the Hydra during the duration of the spell. Oh, that's a much that better would be idea. Insanely good. Like, insanely good. That's That takes it from being bad to insanely good. Hmm. So I don't know about that. Maybe if I it like was like a the small effect. If it was a what? Maybe if it was like a smaller like uh, field, because if it just covered like say like four or five hydras per cast, I'd be fine with it following. Uh, that's really good. Ooh, nice so stasis. So Jim is gonna try and push into all these cannons, and no, then he turns not. around and says, "No, that's a lot of cannons." And shield batteries. And shield batteries. <laughs> Adaptive talons on the way from Jim, because you know lurkers mm. are great against what we're seeing here from Puck. Okay. So good. Yeah. It's mass void rays, though. I was being sarcastic. Uh, I don't yeah. know what he's doing, why he's getting adaptive talons at all, but he's making vipers. For yeah, vipers are. That's what I was just going to say. Void rays don't have that much HP. A parasitic bomb or two, and they're just dead. Or just a bunch of hydras. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Remember? Yeah. I just. Ugh. 
Hmm. This is, I'm, I'm actually really glad that we're seeing some uh, experimentation. Me too. Thanks, Puck. We appreciate yeah. it. Ooh, ooh, what's that upgrade? It is uh, more range Green for the lurkers. Oh, the lurker range upgrade. I haven't Do seen Do they the have icon less yet. range by default now? Or Oh my gosh. The voids are actually doing work. Doing all right. It's... Hydras are running. The lurkers are not going to help at all. Uh, there's two sentries. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the sentries will be a big deal with Guardian Shield. Goodbye, hatchery. Wait, hatchery. The hydras, fine. though, oh, are no. just slaughtering. But the force fields are pretty good. The oracles are going down, though. I mean, here's the parasitic bomb, though. It is. These are fucking <laughs> 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 Wow, they're speedy, so you can split them off quick. Yeah, you can split That's out a cool. parasitic bomb a little better, which is nice. Jim Rising is not pleased right now, let me tell ya. Yeah, but he made lurkers against Mass Void Ray. Come on, man. Why? I Why would couldn't you do tell ya. I mean, he's making 17 Hydras, though. Yeah, he might actually pull out of this. He might. Like, Voidrays hydras are comically are... bad against Hydras. Like, listen to our Hydras. <laughs> 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 so uh, really like these guys have a history. Apparently yeah, it's not a super friendly history. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> hydras are back. I agree. <laughs> and this is the last game that Puck ever builds void rays. He's making five more. Uh, and we'll just keep this going. Yeah, he's throwing up a ton of gateways now. And he's making- he's on five base. Yeah, economically he is in a wonderful position. Yeah, Puck lately has been doing this thing which he just make- takes like, all the bases. Like, I saw a picture on Reddit, he had like, literally every base on the map, and the Terran just had three. I mean, why not? Mmm... Jim has a pretty good composition here, though. I mean, Lurkers are good, Hydras are good, Vipers to cover them make them... Pretty darn good. <laughs> Jim is crying right now and laughing. Alright, let's see. Hydra's taken on the voids. There's a lot of zealots to help out, but now the lurkers are really going to be helpful to this. There's still a bit too much Protoss here, I feel, but the Hydra's, I mean, yeah. they're trading out. They are, and that's all they need to do. And void rays are super expensive. Yeah, splitting off the Parasitic Bomb going pretty well for Buck <laughs> Hydras just there. destroy Void Rays. I know, it's like two Hydras can eat a Void Ray. <laughs> to be oh fair, God. they are plus three Hydras versus no armor upgrade Voids. Playmon says that Puck and Jim Rising are in love, but it's a secret. So, understandable. That was a weird abduct. Hmm. So Lurkers here for the Zealots. By that I mean there are no Lurkers anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. Archons, still void rays. <laughs> <laughs> Puck and Jim Rising are just... They're just the best. They have the chattiest relationship in all of StarCraft. Oh, they do. I don't know how they play so good. And also talk so much. Uh, you know what? I gotta say, Zealots against Hydras are substantially worse. Yeah, you're right. You that definitely eight are right damage about is that. really good against the really chewy, like weak hydras with all with their little HP. Yeah, I definitely I agree. Are we just doing this for the next ten minutes? Like we're just gonna hydras keep showing up and killing stuff, not, and Buck right? shows up with more void rays and oh good, they ended. Okay. Metis asks what we think about the creep tumor cancellation change. Um. I think if the opposing player really focuses on the creep tumors, they can really shut down creep spread for the Zerg. But at this point of the game, like, how often do creep tumors get canceled once you get past the 10 minute mark, really? Not that often. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim and Puck, they are both amazing. <laughs> the banter between these guys is just so, so good. Hey, Metis, thanks for retweeting the uh, Africa World tweet. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. So Puck is still building <laughs> voids. Jim is building hydras. That explains the monkey in the spinning uh, clan logo for Jim Rising's hatcheries. Yes, it does. Ah. 
Puck's like, you know what I need against all these Hydras? More Void Rays, but also Storm. Yes. Once he gets the Storm, he wins. Okay, so this is what I think Blizzard intended for the Void Rays to be used for. These guys are just kind of yeeting across the map right now. Wee! Man, then... fast Hellet and fast Void Ray. What a meme. <laughs> That's actually so true. What's quicker? 4.65? 4.72. Wow, they're both so fast. Man, these voids are so clubbed up. Yeah, abducting into Hydras. The original intent of abducts back in the day. So does Parasitic Bomb do overkill? or Like, does it stack or no? I think it stacks, I yeah. think it does too. That's why splitting is so important here. Oh, High Templar getting sniped off. Not good for Puck. This is a lot yeah, of voids, though. And with the Zealots, I think Jim's losing everything. Like, where's all of his supply? Where's Jim's Banelings is what I'd like to know. Hmm, that is a he good question. Crush, he He's just making solid. more Hydras. I know, and Puck's just making more voids. <laughs> you know when I joked at the start of the cast that all Jim does is build Hydras? Oh. Incredible. It really is. Um, the Zealots are going down. The Hydras deal, like, they deal no damage to the Voidras. Or, I mean, to the Zealots, but then they deal so much damage to the Voidras. Go, oh, High Templar, keep dying here. Hmm. Resources lost is neck and neck, by the way. Puck was trying to expand there for some reason. What the crap, dude? I couldn't tell you. Take all your all opponent's right. money. Hey, some lurkers to deal with the zealots. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Clayman says, what a clown match. Hydra's just out a little bit too far on the map, I feel. Lurkers running. Jim Fiesta. making more Hydra's. He's going to have three three on his Hydra's soon. I think Puck should get some more upgrades, right? Uh-huh. Like, he's only with 2-2. Two, two. And by that, I don't mean 2-2 two, two for all of his units. Just plus 2 attack for his air and his ground. Man, uh, look at these Hydras uh, standing in. Mm, they are dying. They're outnumbered a whole bunch, is the problem here. But but they deal so much damage to Void They just trade so well. I just, it reminds me of this one game back in Heart of the Swarm. Where Hydras were bad and nobody ever made them, but this one game, Protoss opened Void Ray, and I was like, thank goodness I can make Hydras and win, and I did. <laughs> and that has stuck with me for so many years, because it's like the one time I can make Hydras in Heart of the Swarm. Yeah. Hmm. It's just been that for Hydras versus Void Ray, they have been their anti enemy for years. Hey, look who's making Anitis. Huh. Do you think, okay, here's the question. After Jim's first Nidus and the units pop out slow, do you think he says something? No. <laughs> hmm. Because that's one of the main changes. But Jim is, is not Bly, who I think was probably the most upset about the Nidus change. I guess. I mean, I've always found it a little hilarious how fast units unload and load from a Nidus worm. Like, instant. It's crazy. You can have a 200 supply army in that thing in, like, three seconds. It's nuts. Uh, goodbye, all of Puck's probes. That is way. a lot of dead probes. He still has 60 after that, though. Hey, look. Puck's on the other side of the map. Hmm. And Jim Rising gets away with his drones. So he's going to be all right economically. Making more Hydras. Making more Vipers to deal with this. The shenanigans continue. Not sure what if we're going to get to Nidus. Uh -oh. I know. The tech of Jim could be in trouble here. There's only an infestation fit here. Uh, and a spawning pool, I guess. Okay, Hydras are repositioning. There's like... Yeah, a Hydra per Void Ray. I think the Hydras got this. I do not. But the Void Rays think so. They're scared, and they, man. And then he recalls oh. out. Except for one. Sorry, one. That one is alone. It looks like it's moving in times two speed. They're so quick. They're so fast. They're speedy boys. Do they still have the prismatic alignment ability? And it yeah. slows them down still? Uh-huh. All right. 
Now, this is a lot of size storm. Puck has made the High Templar. And if there's anything that kills Hydras, it is High Templar. So we will see if uh, Puck is able to get those connections on Jim Rising. Jim Rising tends to have pretty good splits versus Psy Storm. But if he's a little bit reckless here, he could get punished hard by this. Mm, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No Storm he's yet. He is refusing to deal with these Zealots at all. I guess the Lurkers are doing okay, but... There is a Nidus being called on in. But it's going to die real fast. If that was the old Nidus. All the units would have popped out. <laughs> I, think, I think it was dead before the erupting animation came in, and it just went anyway. All right. Hatchery is under fire from Puck once again. Both these guys are just base trading, kind of. Mm, this is a big army here for Jim Rising. And he does have the bigger bank. Uh, he's got a lot of vipers. He's eating feedbacks. feedbacks. Good splits on that parasitic bomb. Yeah, Puck is really good at splitting off his voids. And he is starting to push into really the heart of Jim Rising here. So Jim is pulling back with all of his hydras. Get back on that creep for that speed boost. I think if you're Jim right now, you probably want to throw up like another Hydra Den to the north or something. Because this is getting kind of close to his production. Man, I'm going to play a game with you. How many Vipers have died in this? 24. Sixteen. Oh, okay. That's not too off. Hydra's coming around, speeding storms all over the place, though. Yeah, Jim's How pulling back, though. Have... Puck has a lot of storm, though. Oh, See, boy. This is... This is me when I play against Protoss, and I'm like, they're surely out of Storm now. <laughs> there's always then, more Storm. There's three more Storms? Yeah. Wow. Jim is getting onto the production of Puck. So, uh, that is good for him. But these Void Rays going unchecked at this point, pretty much. Jim's trying to make a few Hydras. He's moving Spore Crawlers down, which will do all right. He just needs a few units out, and he should be able to defend versus these Voids. And uh, every one of these boys has at least 10 kills. They're pretty good. Oh, there's the Hydra Den under fire, though. Jim never made another. Or did he? No, he did not. So he can make queens. Man, this is desperation Hydra production from Jim right now. His bank is nothing. 500 minerals, 1,000 gas, not a lot. Um, another Nidus. This is actually a very important base for Puck. Yeah, it's new. Zealot's handling it, though. Handle it, they do. Jim Rising is making nothing. His supply is down to 85. He's got one mining base, really, with 51 drones on it. It's a little oversaturated. Oh, boy. Oh, what a puck size storm that drone line. Ho! Oh. Playmon saying, Zealots are better now? That was a nerf or a buff because I think it is better to move faster than just take 8 damage? I mean, debatably, yeah. It wasn't necessarily, it was ne wasn't necessarily supposed to be like an inherent nerf or buff. It was supposed to be a design change. Yeah. And it really depends a lot on your situation, right? If you're defending, having that 8 damage is nice. But if you want to move across the map to harass something, the speed is better. So, uh -huh, take your pick situationally. Puck's up about 40 supply right now. He's trying to knight us, but Puck is all over that for Jim. Mm. Yeah, Jim is trying another knight us. Puck, yeah, he's really on it. Jim unloads a Lurker and a few Hydras and a Queen. But that's it, GG. Puck takes game number one. <laughs> what a mess. That was amazing. That was a fantastic mess. Mm-hmm. Really fun mess. More of that, please. More shenanigans. So yeah, that does put him up uh, best of one-up.
And one to zero in this little best of three that we're playing in this first match, or second match rather. Please check out the match arena. There's a link right above the chat there. You can put in code AW47 to contribute to the prize pool absolutely free. Show these players you care about them, helping increase the prize pool for them so that they'll come back and do more Africa World events with us and reward them for all the work they did in mm -hmm. fighting against really fast void rays, for example. <laughs> I mean, it worked. It worked. I still think Banelings would have been awesome. The Zealots caused him more problems than anything. I yeah. I think the main thing is that Jim Rising just never consolidated his army, right? Yeah, he was always scrapping. Yeah, it seemed like he was fighting with half of his army most of the time. Agreed. So we'll see if we get more memes in game number two here or not. What could we see? I want to see Infester. Somebody said that in chat, and I was inspired. I mm, see the Jimmy's Broodlord Infester. change was an interesting one. That What's is, that one? That is a good point. They uh, they're, they have a harder time firing now because their range was kind of like artificially higher. It's called uh, their leashing the range. Leashing. Yeah. Right, right. They adjusted the leashing. Yeah, so they don't fire as far or anything like that now, which will make Thors a lot better. Yeah, yeah. It used to be a lot better at kiting with the Broodlords. Mm -hmm. So that got nerfed. All Thors right. may be better now, which is kind of exciting. Because uh, with Infestors being worse and Thors being better, could potentially mean that like they might actually be viable for a unit to sit on. Anyway, here we are, up in the top left-hand side of the map. It's Root Puck. And spawning in the bottom right... It is Jim Rising. It's his monkey face. His monkey, indeed. You think that monkey's famous? No. I think it's a generic monkey. Hmm. All right, Jim. Uh, what you owe us here? Rush. So if you could make that happen, that'd be great. Ooh, he owes us what? Sorry. An infester rush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had that. Uh... Shroud? Concurred. Playmon, thank you for donating 50 cents to the prize pool. Much appreciated. Happy to have you here. Yes, the goal is to try and uh, give these players as many dollars as we can. So... Do you think Puck goes for the Voids again? I don't know. I think he's kind of made his point here. It's like, the Void Rays are fast. They're fine. By themselves, they weren't that good. Still. No, they, they were quite horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just the and thing the is, Jim Rising never had, like, that big of a ball of Hydras. And I he feel like... Hmm. Couple times. Yeah. Didn't he he wiped out the Voider account a couple times, but just couldn't keep macroing. Yeah, I guess that's true. Hmm. I mean, that was an enjoyable game to watch. It was. Had a good time. Adept moving across the map for Puck. He does have a Stargate on the way once again. Well, that's just standard. It's probably just more Oracle stuff. He did open with like five or six Oracles for reasons. Yeah, he does that a lot too. He enjoys his Oracles. Moracle, Oracle. Jim's making a lot of links. He is. That is way more than you want for defense. Oh, wait. When did this happen? Huh. I don't know, but Ling's made it up all of a sudden. Uh, this pylon. Oh, my god. The gosh, main pylon is... Un this is actually really bad for Puck. Like, is he just... Yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> huh. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> hmm. Jim says, one way not to have to worry about late game pro is... Ling Rush. All right. So the third map is going to be Triton. 
Zippy. Oh yeah, that was a uh, 16 pool. Oh, that was fine. 16 hatch, 16 pool, speed. Hmm. Not particularly a super fast pool or anything, but boy, did it work out. That was the 16 pool? Yeah, according oh, to the build order thing, I which didn't lies didn't notice, my so. bad. Yeah. All right. So we will load on into the next game as soon as these players are ready. So as long as we're talking about balance, we I think we discovered this um, one of the Africa worlds. But basically, the basic unit Zealot, Marine, and Zergling have never been had, never had their base stats affected. They've never been made faster or slower, or done more damage or less damage. Oh, you're right. In the history of StarCraft II, not once. So if you're ever talking about, oh, they should, you know, nerf marines or make zerglings slower, they're not going to do it. Nope. They've never touched those uh, units at all, not once. There would be there would be riots in the streets. Probably. Also, I think it would require them to rebalance the early stages of the game a lot, and they don't want to do that. <laughs> like, no. We're good. Just leave it's this it's at it a pretty okay place. It's been there for a while. Yeah, there's still a fair bit of volatility, I think, in like a TVP, which is nice. PVZ is pretty, pretty repetitive, I think, which would maybe be like my one thing if they could open that up a bit more for PVZ. Agreed. P or ZVT is pretty repetitive too. That's true, but then there's at least the options of like bio or mech, so can be a little bit different whether the Terran's gonna two rax you or not or yeah that's fair. <laughs> anyway here we are it's puck in the bottom right hand side of the map in top left it is Jim rising rising up in the scoreboards tying it up with zergling shenanigans keep in mind this is only uh this is only a best of three so whoever takes this next map advances and is in the money Advances on to play future. I like this skin, I'm realizing as I look at it. It's nice. normal opening here from the players paying attention to the pool. how many lings are in production yes paying a little bit None. more attention to the pool that uh, yeah. early pool snuck by me look at this drone it gets so big when it's building a hatchery it gets even bigger uh -huh. <clears throat> and then it explodes Stargate for Puck once more. Shaker G asking best of five or best of seven. It's a best of three here. Just a quick little uh, series. Yes. Best of threes all the way throughout to the finals. And then... Then we are getting on into uh, a best... Yeah, just a best of seven. So, uh, because this is a one-day event. Adept moving on in for Puck. Not going to get a drone. Jim rising on point so far. Oh, good spore save there from Jim. Bad. Still resources lost. Oh, oh, oh. Not escape. Then he gets to do the satisfying cancel of all the uh, spores. Or is he going to let both finish and then just move one to the main? Jim yeah, has a 1,000 well. IQ. 
There you go. Thanks for the five dollar addition to the prize pool. The Metro message. Appreciate that is it. why my email plinged. That would be it. Yes, all the contributions to the Matrina goes towards the players, so thank you so much for that. We do still want to use all those Matcherino codes, though. So just as this game is underway, you can use that coupon, AW47. You, I guarantee you have an account that uh, lets you log into Matcherino and use that coupon. Oracle gonna find a drone. Not really paying for itself at this point. <clears throat> oh, there's another Stargate. Yeah, it's just got to be more of those Oracles. Puck likes them. Could be Void Rays again, though, after. That's how Puck opened up in uh, game number one. It's true. This is why you got to love Puck. He's a player who really does his own thing. Like, for a long time, he was just doing the Blink Stalker Disruptor. Which is pretty good, in fairness. And now he's really experimenting a lot more these days, I feel, too. Another oracle on the way. Jim is building queens and a lair. I'm willing to bet it's for hydras. Ooh, transferring drones catching a couple hits there too. Yeah, six gone down so far. Not terrible damage to Jim, but not great either. Do you know what's quicker now? The void rays with the upgrades or corruptors? It's gotta be void rays with the upgrade. <clears throat> Let me check real quick. Because you said it was like 4-6? Yeah, I think so. I cannot say. Corruptor fly speed is 4.725. Oh. Jim got hit with a bit of a supply block, building seven overlords at once. Never being supply blocked again. So it's 4.725 for Corruptor. So it feels... It's gotta be faster than the Void Ray, right? Because Void Rays that can chase down Corruptors, that's insanely good. Yeah. Oh. You have to be avoiding that. Dropper Lord's on the way for Jim Rising. Is he gonna load up his Queens and just make, like, a big swell of Hydras? I think he is. Yeah. All aboard, says Jim. Queens are All moving right. to the front time. It is time indeed. Puck's still just building oracles. Hmm. And he's going into a fourth base. This is really greedy of the Protoss. When Jim Rising is just to it to all in him. Or most likely, I believe. These uh, drop lords are good for something. Yeah. Jim is... Just gonna go inject his hatcheries. He's just making hydras, no more drones. He's stopped at 60, so he has to go for an attack. Whether he'll bring the queens or not is still up in the air, but no, it is not. The queens are now up in the air. And uh, we see the hydras are gonna be fighting these oracles a little bit earlier. Oh, uh, it's actually gonna go fairly evenly. Jim Rising loses a lot of his... Uh, a lot of his Hydras, but then Puck loses most of his damage, really, in those Oracles. And uh, with the Queens coming on in, this is going to be a little bit scary for Jim. Puck tried to get up a fourth phase really early, and he could be about to get punished for it hard. Hydras are going to be rallying across the map. Once the Queens unload, it's going to be a lot more scary for the Protoss. Jim just needs to transfuse nonstop, and he is doing exactly that. Lurkers are coming wow. to join into the fray. And this is looking a little bit dicey for the Protoss player right now. The Queens have just been tanking so, so much as more Hydras and Lings are now joining into the fight. Force fields are good, trapping those Lings behind, but they expired. This base is in a lot of trouble here. 
Karma Supply is about even at this stage, but the Hydra Queen plays pretty good against Stalker overall right now. Oh, Puck's going for the engagement right now. The Oracles are going to get focused down, it would seem. The Zerg wow. Army is starting to thin out a little bit, though. The Lurkers, an anchor point. Yeah, the Lurkers are desperately... Well, they were going to try to take down that Nexus, but apparently we're pushing forward. Yeah, Need Jim's got to be careful not to overcommit here. He has lost most of his buffer. Where's his reinforcements that should be rallying across the map right now? I'm not seeing a lot. Nothing else is coming across the map yet. Jim has really seized production, and I think, as a result, Puck's going to hold this. Overlords all dead, not supply blocking. Jim rising though, because he prepared for that previously. Mm -hmm. Jim's gonna make. Puck... Mm. Well, Puck's making more oracles. I just wanted to point that out. Oh well, he's Puck. Jim's moving yeah. in with just a handful of hydras, but this is where stalker trades really excel. So a big overcommitment there, I feel. Yeah, blink stalker, pretty fantastic against Hydra. Yeah, until the Hydras really reach a critical mass, they're pretty darn good. A Lurker coming on in now is going to help out, but Puck even has Zealots into the mix. They don't have charge, so they're the regular slow Zealots, but still, this is a lot of buffering that is being added on in, and they're even getting face time with the Hydras. This is still close. Jim rising on the retreat once again, as uh, Puck is able to hold on for now. His economy is much better than that of Jim rising. He's warping in another big round of stalkers. And once again, I feel like it's because Jim rising hasn't really been able to consolidate again properly. And uh, because yeah. of that, Puck has been taking favorable trades. Yeah, just trickling in three or four at a time is not really going to work out here. Again, engaging in the situation is not a good idea. Yeah, he's got a retreat. He's trying to save his lurkers, but I don't know if that's even possible here. Oh, one's down. The Hydras are actually so bold being this close to this many oh. stalkers. And the other lurker goes down too. This is problematic for Jim the longer it goes on. See, now the thing is, Pac hasn't actually made any AoE yet though. So if Jim Rising had just reached like 200, 200 Hydra, he would beat what Puck has. Hmm. Puck is looking to push on in, cleaning creep at the very least. A lurker drop is being queued up for Jim Rising. So Puck goes up to a fifth base. Jim is only on four. Really shows the situation our Zerg player is in. <laughs> yeah, economically not very happy. To be sure. Oh, Jim throws up a hatchery for it to die. Bit of a waste of money there. Stalkers are actually going to blink into the main base. Puck is a bad lad. He's even got the Hydras or the Oracles in the sky to support this. The Hydras are ret ret coming back in to defend this. Yeah, blinking out. A little bit scarier than I think he was planning on when he first went up there. I honestly well, think, though, since Puck has not gone into any AoE, as long as Jim Rising keeps building Hydras here... Hydras and Lurkers, it will win out versus Stalkers and Oracles once he gets enough supply. Yeah, as long as we're talking enough, for sure. Like, they're actually very, very good versus this army composition. Stalkers are not strong enough to contend with Hydras in a head-on fight. And Jim Rising, he's going up in supply. Puck has not made any AoE yet. I feel like that is a big mistake from the Protoss. Like, Oracles are good. But Mass Hydra, I think, wins out. A lot of Lurkers in the mix, too. Jim Rising could overcommit to them, since there is a ton of Oracles in the sky. Yeah, watching that production tab, Robotics Bay is about halfway complete. So we're going to start seeing probably Disruptor, maybe Colossus would be pretty good in this situation. What I'm actually shocked by is Adaptive Talons isn't done yet. Not even close because yeah. the Infestation Pit just started. Slow lurkers for Jim Rising. And right now he is just pinned. 
I think he can definitely push this army back, though. Like, just keep making Hydras. There is still no AoE for the Protoss. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if Jim Rising can take a fight, he is going to be able to uh, beat Puck here. I think you're right, but this is a problem right here. This this is a problem. You are correct. Oracle's down. I mean, you could probably get the hatch if you really wanted to. Hydras say, no, get out of my house. <laughs> And then the oracles say, I don't think I will. One or two gets picked off. I mean, Puck is doing a good job of keeping Jim Rising pinned right now. I just think that if he like wants to win this game 100%, you throw up like the Templar Archives. Although it looks like he's having fun with it. He's just taking this Nexus here. He's got pretty much all the bases on his side of the map. Yeah, the expanding is just too much at this point. Guess who's going for uh, Shadow Stride? I'm guessing the Protoss player. That would be a solid guess. Oracle's yeah. coming on in. They're going to be getting thrown away, though, it look, as the Hydras just massacre them. And this is where I'm a little bit concerned here for Puck. Like, I know he's in a very commanding position. But if there's a... Like, he's given Jim Rising hope to come back in this game. Like, this is just a lot of Hydras. The Lurkers are going to come now. And if Jim Rising just gets into a good place to push, he's going to be looking pretty scary, I think. Just, he hasn't really pushed across the halfway part of the map like this for a while. No, he hasn't. Oracles. Going to fly right ah! over the Hydras. Oh, that is a big mistake. Okay. And we're, like, we're still just looking at it. It's just these stalkers and some oracles for Puck. He's got a very good bank. He's got a very good income. Jim Rising now, though, firing up eight vipers. Like, I feel like Jim Rising should be going for a big attack, though. He's not, though. He's just defending on his five bases. Sitting at 74 workers, going for adaptive talons. Maybe he's waiting for that upgrade, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. He's also getting his plus two attack, he's getting his carapace as well, so getting getting his upgrades going still. A lot of spore crawlers at this base. I really, really enjoy the fact that he committed to that. Saving drone lives. Jim's going to have to be very careful with his Vipers since there's so many Blink Stalkers out on the map. Puck just nabs up another hatchery like it's nothing. <laughs> Hydras for days though, like they can push back this Oracle army. No problem. Lurkers getting that uh, new upgrade, the Seismic Spines, giving them more range. The Hydras, they're just trading with the Stalkers fine, though. Okay, I like this from Puck. A good number of spaces forward, securing up his, uh, his retreat if he needs to. There we go. That's how you deal with it. Hydra's getting on top there. <clears throat> okay, in goes Puck. He's going to be looking to nab up a hatchery. Gets the, gets the queen as well. Covers his retreat with stasis. Really cute play here from the Protoss. But he's actually getting himself a little bit sandwiched. This is actually... Oh boy, this is actually looking a little bit scary for the Protoss player right now. Parasitic Bomb goes down on the Oracle. It's gonna really start working on their Whoa. HP. Blinding Cloud goes down in expert positioning oh. from Jim Rising. The Oracle's doing a lot of damage, but their numbers are thinning out, and Jim Rising takes the big fight that he was looking for. Lost most of his army, but hey, wiped out all the things Yeah, the Puck supply had. really still tells a story here, though. Puck just needs to remax. He's got money for days. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Puck has made 17 Blink DTs. Of course he has. 
He's Puck. And if I'm Jim Ryzen right now, I'm saying, um, how do I defend versus 17 Blink DTs? Ah, uh, he's got the Hydras, though, and he's actually going to catch, like, all the DTs. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Puck showing how to throw away a lot of resources. He's warped in, of course, another big blob of DTs, though. 14 this time. Going to be heading towards the base to the north. Jim Rising doesn't know about this. So, uh, he is going to be probably losing this base. Yeah, bit of an understatement there. <laughs> Uh, this is this is why you gotta love Puck. This is why you gotta love NA, man. Like, <laughs> these two series have been amazing. A good number of lurkers defending this hatchery, so these zealots are gonna have themselves a bad time, I feel. Yeah, a really bad time. Oh boy, this is just a zealot massacre. I mean, drones are gonna die, sure, but... That was all like the 2k minerals of zealots. Yeah. Oh, are these hydras! Oh, very far out! Jim Rising does want to push into Puck, though. Mm. Protoss player. Might have a tough time taking on all of these uh, lurkers. Revelation goes down. So Puck can see this army. Jim Rising's gonna burrow. In comes all of the Zealots. In comes all the DTs. They blink on top. The lurkers are getting sniped, but the army of Puck is really clumping on up here. Jim Rising is giving it his all, but Puck just overwhelming with his huge economy. And Jim Rising is really down on supply right now. Uh, honestly, who cares if the Zealots aren't doing 8 damage on charge? <laughs> They're still hammering away at everything. <laughs> that one lurker getting chased by the Novas. More lurkers coming on in. Uh, there is indeed observers, but oh, big of ducks going down. Uh, actually, only killed one of those uh, disruptors somehow. Hmm. That one just stopped running. It just gave Lost up. Well to live. <laughs> oh man, here's the big DT counterattack. So Jim Rising, his economy isn't isn't that great, and it has taken another big blow here. Look at the these drones. Don't mind us. Nope. Just hiding in a corner. That blink animation is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm, the DTs could get abducted here. Or they're yeah, actually just they busy are. hitting other bases with their friends. These DTs are gonna die, or at least some of them will, but they're gonna get the hatchery. Other hatchery is gonna go down. Suddenly, Jim Rising falls to 33 workers. Ninety-five probes to thirty-three drones right now. <laughs> it's pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, this is a this is a tough go at it for Jim Rising. Puck is playing his uh, his game right now. Uh, Puck, he's still technically down on army supply. Lurker is gonna burrow. The Protoss player has one DT counterattacking, which is actually getting a lot of damage done here. Big engagement going down. Zealots charging on into the Lurkers. Goes about as well as you'd expect. Zealots charging into Lurkers. So Jim Rising takes another good fight. The resources lost is really in favor of Jim Rising this game. However, the fact of the matter is that Puck just has such an economy that Jim Rising just hasn't been able to keep up with this much stuff. Uh, Zealot's getting on top once again. The Hydra's going to retreat as they try and buffer for this. The Lurker's just shooting out their spines in mass. And Puck's army does die once again, but he's the player with the bigger bank to remax. He was down to 20 supplies, back up to 40 now, making 11 Zealots at a time and an immortal. These games are crazy pants. What is this game? <laughs> Puck pushing up the right side again into Lurker is not super ideal. Oh, that Adaptive Talon Burrow upgrade is so good. So good to have. 
This is one DT. How many kills does he have? 16. Might add a lair and a queen to that list. Jim Rising finally going to clean this guy up, I think. Puck! At 24 minutes into the game, adds on a Templar Archives. It's about time for some storm, I guess. This is a lot of zealots. Army supply in favor of Puck. He's actually going to get this hatchery too now. Four Archons, two Immortals on the way. It really is looking like Puck is going to be able to close this one out. As this army is becoming pretty good at this point. Jim Rising is mining a little bit, making a few units here and there. Puck is out on the map. Immortals and Archons. Bigger army supply this time. This one could be tough for Jim Rising. The main army going to be moving on in here, catching some Hydras. Jim Rising has to come back to try and deal with this. Lurkers run right into the Immortals and Archons. The rest of the Lurkers going to burrow, but Jim Rising taps out and Puck <laughs> takes it in 